Synthivex Academy. Today, we're going to work on sound, and in particular sound for interactive installations, for physical space, for students of mine who are building interactive installations and do not know what a voltage-controlled oscillator or noise or filters or a duck and all sorts of wacky verbs and terms that musicians might use. And, um, you know, some people work on other stuff build other things than sound. But I think it's really useful to know how to work with sound because once you know how to work with sound you could add it to physical objects or even work on uh, screen-based experiences and add a whole new dimension to them. What I have here is a few modules and they do all sorts of things together. And we're going to learn some of what they do. The first thing we're going to focus on is VCV Rack. What is this program and why should we actually use it? The second thing is going to be an oscillator and in general how we use oscillators. What does it mean to be an oscillator philosophically? And how do we use noise? How do we use filtering? And we're probably going to touch on uh, a duck as well. A duck. Okay, so let's get started. First thing first, what is VCV Rack? In a nutshell, this is a program that allows you to synthesize sound, but what makes it really unique is the fact that it's very immediate, and at the same time, it is pretty low level for a designer, for a visual designer. What I mean by that is, if you think about programming a synthesizer, you need to code and then run the program and only then you can actually hear what you do. So it's not very immediate, and then it can actually take quite a lot of time to get the understanding of how what you're doing is actually affecting what you're doing. And so the best thing to do is to try to imitate what you're planning to do, first of all, in something that is much more intuitive, in a program that allows you to get immediate feedback to what you do so you could play with it and come up with some ideas. And once these ideas are figured out, then you could try to figure out how to translate them into programming, uh, to the programming language you're using. Um, so that is VCV Rack. The way that we get it is simply by going uh, to the Googles and we search for VCV Rack and then we discover the website of the VCV Rack. It has this lovely magical thing in it. And if you click anywhere here, it will simply go here. Bye. Now, then you'll just click on Get Rack. It's too late. Sorry. Um, and then you can just download your version. Whatever platform you have, just download this version and then we can get started. So the first thing to do is to just delete everything I have here. And let's get started with an oscillator. An oscillator is something that's literally oscillating. What does it mean? It means that you have a signal, you have a device that makes a signal, and this signal just moves up and down, up and down, up and down. Think about a bee. Wings moving really, really fast, you could actually hear it. Now imagine that you would connect to these wings something that would move every time that the wing goes up and down. And I'm not saying you should torture any bees in this, but just try to think about the analogy of the idea of wings moving up and down, and then you could hear them, but you could also get them to be connected to something so they would actually move it up and down. This is the concept of an oscillator. It is a signal that moves up and down. Now, there are different kinds of signals, there are different kinds of oscillators. We're just going to focus on the most simple one, the, ver the very basic VCV rack oscillator. And to get there, what we're going to do is simply right click on the screen and you're going to see a bunch of modules. You're probably not going to have the same amount of modules that I have simply because I downloaded a lot of modules, but that doesn't really matter at all. You just search for a VCO. A VCO is a voltage controlled oscillator. Now, this is the guy we want. We take it, we put it on the screen. I just dragged it and it's on my rack now. I can move it to wherever I want. And let's have a look at it. What do we have here? We have a knob, a large knob for frequency, and we can see that the frequency of oscillation is 
I, I get feedback to how fast it is here with that uh, little lead. And at a certain point, it just becomes a constant light because it is so fast. Now, we have pulse width. We don't need to deal with that at the moment. And then we have some sockets here. And we have some sockets here. The difference between these is that the black one is an output and the non-black one is an input. So what I want to do now is to understand the concept of frequency modulation because the power of a voltage controlled oscillator is that it can actually be animated. It can be modulated by another oscillator. Let's have a look. What I'm going to do is instead of taking a VCO, a voltage controlled oscillator, I'm actually going to take an LFO, which stands for low frequency oscillator. It's pretty much the same thing, but just goes to lower frequencies. Let's just take this one here that looks very similar to the one we had. And we can now take the signal from here and put it into the FM frequency modulation of this guy. And we can see that the light here is the same light that's here that is now being sent through this cable to the FM. And when I now bring this up, what's going to happen is that this signal is basically going into this signal by the amount of this valve. This little knob here is completely closed, but then when I open it, I basically let the signal from this oscillator to go into the other oscillator. Now, we're not really hearing anything. And this is where we're going to deviate from VCOs and just go directly into the DUC. A DUC is a digital to analog converter. And basically anything that we're doing on the computer is code. We cannot really hear code. We need to hear audible waveforms. And to do that, we actually need to translate this code, the zeros and ones, into something that is actually audible. So the digital to analog converter is uh, simply just searching for audio and then just picking the first one here, dragging it here, and then taking the sine wave from here and putting it into the mono input, and nothing happens. Why? Because we need to say what device we're using. We are using our sound card. Inside the computer, there is a sound card, and it's noted here. So I can just do MacBook Pro speakers, one, two, and I can hear my sound. I have a volume control over the sound. And I have a frequency here that I can hear now. So this that I do not hear is simply a frequency that is so low that with this particular form of sign, I cannot really hear it. My ears are not able to hear anything like this. That doesn't mean that it's not oscillating. It just means that I cannot hear it. Now, what happens when I take this knob and bring it up. What is that? It's basically this knob. It's basically this knob. It's being animated by that other oscillator. And that's pretty cool because what we could do now is create a sort of generative thing that plays on its own. All these knobs can be tweaked to just move just a little bit because we have these what we call attenuators that will just allow the signal, just a certain amount from that signal, from that second oscillator to go into to go into that oscillator. Okay. Now, we, we looked uh, before at uh, the sign, but let's have a look at the triangle. Okay. Let's have a look at the saw. Oh, wow. The difference between them is something that we call harmonic complexity. There are more frequencies playing on that. It's not only the fundamental note that's being played, like boo. There are actually more frequencies that are being played at the same time. And that relates to the second topic we want to talk about, which is filters. So let's just right click and look for a VCF, a voltage controlled filter. 
voltage control filter looks exactly the same but just a bit thinner and then we can take the signal from here into this input and take this low pass filter which allows it allows the low frequencies to pass so if we're thinking about an eq we have the treble bass mid-range then we are allowing only the bass to pass through let's have a look so low pass filter into the input and this sounds pretty similar okay let's try another signal still kind of the same a bit different but let's have a look what happens when i open the filter So I let these high frequencies in, and that's what makes filters actually pretty cool, because I could now take another uh, LFO, let's do Command-D, shortcut, LFO, and take this signal and put it into the cutoff. Now just imagine that you create an interactive installation where someone would move around something and they could just control this when they get close to the thing to the to your sensor for example or when they enter the room now of course i could also change this frequency and play around with this So maybe one sensor could actually make this change and another sensor could make this change and we could modulate the modulator of the modulator because everything here is a modulator, right? We have an oscillator and it is oscillating to change the frequency of another oscillator and we could take another oscillator to control that oscillator and then your mind blows at a certain point because you have no idea where you are. But um, for now, this should be enough. We're going to take now another another step. We're going to add noise. And noise is super interesting because we could create a lot of stuff with noise. I just right click, search for noise. I have this module here at the, on the side and I'm going to take the white noise and put it directly to ruin my ears completely. <laughs> I'm just going to take the volume down before I do that. But let's just hear this. This is noise. Now, if I take noise and I put it into a filter, something magical happens. Let's just take the noise, put it into the filter. I'm going to bring the, the filter to the end so I have a good visual representation of what's happening. So I'll be able to read it better. And let's just open the volume now. I can't really hear it quite, but I open the filter. What does this sound like? Ocean waves. And again, if you think about the way you could use this in space to create some storytelling, to tell a story through an object or an installation you're creating where people enter and something like this is oscillating in the background. I'm just thinking about it now, like, how cool would that be if this knob would just move like this? So let's do that. I'm going to take this, L this LFO from here, put it into the cutoff filter. Make it a bit slower. And now it does it for me. Now, what does this sound like? wind how cool is that now you could do a lot of stuff with this you could now start to play around take the square from here and put it into the FM here and send the VCO into the drive and bring this up
and it creates this grit. I didn't know exactly what's going to happen now, and that is an important part of playing with something that is so immediate. You don't need to care if you know or you don't know what's going on here. What you need to do is to just play around, see what happens when you connect an input to an output, an input to an output. You know that the outputs are marked with black and the inputs are not marked. So this way I could create all sorts of complex animations and complex sounds. Let's just see what happens if I take the saw and put it into the FM of this LFO. So it's this oscillator now controlling this oscillator that's controlling the VCF. I think this is enough for today, but my point that I'm trying to bring with this is that with sound you could create a lot of different things. This is just a very short introduction. Hopefully it is short. I have no idea how long it's going to take to edit this. But with this beginning, you can start playing around because you could start downloading all sorts of uh, modules, connect them together and see what kind of sound you could create. And if you're using a Teensy or a Daisy Seed or um, even a basic Arduino with like the Mozi library, you should be able to play around with the different modules that they provide you to create these kind of sounds in your microcontroller that can be controlled by the sensors you're connecting to. Anyway, this is it for today. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. This is the Synthio X Academy. I'm Roy and I'll see you in the next time. Ciao.